Lake Eyre. You I went to the Lake Eyre with Bin Cementi in 1973. That's right. And it, it, it was a, a, a very good thing to do because Vin Cementi was a great naturalist, mm -hmm. but also that he talked about uh, nature as process, mm -hmm. that, that nature is constantly changing and that, that in order to have a, uh, uh, an appreciation of it or to get the richness of it, you have to see it as process. Mm. And there was nothing like Lake Eyre insofar as that there it is and there it isn't. When you went the first time, was it dry or was it filling? No, it was filling. Right. And in order for Lake Eyre, uh, uh, this is what I mean mm. when I say process, is that it has to be all systems going. And Lake Eyre is the lowest point below sea level. And it has to rain in the channel country, which is a, a huge kind of nervous system. It looks like, um, say, blue poles, but better. <laughs> Wouldn't take much, um, <laughs> and uh, then it has to be uh, raining in the uh, Flinders Ranges, and then it has to be raining in Alice Springs. Yes. Now, when that gets going, it's like like I have photographs of it. When that gets going, it's like the whole thing is draining towards the centre, mm -hmm. and. Once, of course, it was an inland sea. Yes. But so, therefore, it's got that kind of fascination about it. Uh, Lake Eyre, when it's full, full of fish, seagulls nesting, uh, 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 flotillas of pelicans, cormorants, everything, mm. full of life. And then at a certain point, it becomes salinated and everything dies, and there's millions of dead fish at the side of the lake. Mm -hmm. And then it returns to, like, um, what it mostly is, uh, a hard salt lake in which Malcolm Campbell broke the land speed test there in 1967. So thick is the is the salt that experts say that you could drive a locomotive over it. it, it, it it's an incredible experience because, you see, uh, most Australians are sourced as well as the huge populations are on the edge. Like there's, there's your busy, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth. Darwin. On the edge of the saucer. And they're living on the edge of the saucer. And the saucer slopes in. And there is Lake Eyre. Um, A.D. Hope wrote about the Australian population. Is they pullulate on the edge. I think that's a lovely way <laughs> of describing <laughs> it. And um, so, so he here we have. But there is another quality. There's another quality in which that the Australian landscape strikes me to be animistic. Uh, uh, the, the Aboriginals could most certainly see that. Mm -hmm. That like there's kangaroo dreaming and there's uh, and, uh, and and there's dingo dreaming, and uh, and if you look at these different shapes of this kind of thing that what is emerging with the land meeting the, the water is there is a there is an incredible animism taking place and it, it's a bird's beak and it goes around to the edge it seems to follow there and it's a bird's feet but hovering over that is this so the haze in which there are pelicans and that the look of the landscape seems, seems to be so foreign to the water. 
What an equation that is. So, but yet you love this sort of barren, dry, harsh Australia, and then just add water, and then look, the, the magic, the magic that happens. That magic that happens. Yes. Look, and you water. see that better than anywhere in Lake Eyre. Oh yes, very, very much so. Uh, well, it's very dramatically yes. so. The and just uh, add water factor. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, it's mystically so as yes. well. Yes. You know, you think well. Wow. Wow, you know, like it's it's somehow it's got this pull about it. And as a, as a human being, as a person, you feel utterly foreign to it. It it's it's quite quite unyielding and in fact uh, the a aboriginal mythology says that there is an evil even evil goddess known as Kurdamurka, and the Aboriginals really kept away from Lake Eyre.